Good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the November 12th regular council meeting to order. And if you can and would join me in the flag salute, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Amy, if you would do the roll call, please. Councilmember Bruins? Present. Councilmember Daniels? Here. Councilmember Middleton? Present. Vice Mayor Miller? Present. And Mayor Slowey? Present. Tonight's meeting of the Citrus Heights City Council is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed caption and webcast at citrusheights.net. Tonight's meeting replays on Monday, November 16th at 9 a.m. on Channel 14. Great. Thank you, Amy. All right, first item, approval of the agenda. And Mayor, I would just like to announce that staff has requested to pull item 10 um, from the agenda tonight. Okay. 10 is removed. Any, uh, anyone wishing anything else? With that, I'll move the item. Second. All righty. Um, I'm going to go with consensus instead of a roll call vote here. So unless I hear somebody say different, I'm going to uh, take nodding of the heads as approval of the agenda. <clears throat> and we'll move on to comments by council members and regional boards. Ms. Bruins, why don't we start with you? Well, I haven't had a regional board meeting since our last council meeting. However, um, I did attend the uh, Veterans Day service yesterday out at Sylvan Cemetery, and it was really well attended. I was, I was pleased. Um, they had all the regular cautions in place for social distancing and so forth and masks. Um, but it was a full uh, service. It went very well. We had uh, a lot of people there. So Good. it was very gratifying to see the public come out for that. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Middleton. We had our uh, fire uh, two by two a while back and um, there's really nothing to report. Our city is safe. Our numbers are within range for calls for uh, service. And we're working with the department to make sure we continue to be able to serve our community um, effectively. Great, thank you. Mr. Daniels. Um, I'll pass. Thank you. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Miller. Well, uh, I hadn't had any uh, regional board meetings till today and uh, STA met. It was a two and a half hour meeting with uh, no action items. Well, we did take one action in closed session. Uh, we interviewed the three finalists for the executive director position. Uh, Will Kempton was just temporary and a candidate was selected. I need to keep it a secret uh, until they agree to the contract terms or employment terms and an announcement will be made uh, next week. Um, I did attend the Veterans Day celebration and uh, yes, Jeannie's right, it was very well attended and a very nice ceremony. So. It's a pleasure to, to be there yesterday. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Joe. Great, thanks. Um, first, I'd like to uh, throw a shout out to the Citrus Heights PD for their Halloween event they did at the uh, police station, the drive-through trunk or treat, uh, very well uh, attended. I don't know the overall number, but uh, when I was in line, I would say there were at least 200 cars. Uh, after I got through, we went out for a bite to eat and drove back by, and it was five to seven. <clears throat> I guarantee you that thing didn't close <laughs> at seven because of the long line of cars that was there. But again, good job, you know, t taking a, uh, you know, showing your community sport, <clears throat> doing something that was obviously different because of the uh, pandemic, but. Uh, uh, everybody that participated, uh, including my three grandchildren, had a, a great time. Uh, unfortunately, they wouldn't share any of their candy with me, so 
<clears throat> that's, that's bad on me, but that's all right. <clears throat> Um, SACOG, nothing really uh, to report there. Interestingly enough, um, <clears throat> there was 10 uh, board members who uh, were up for election <clears throat> or re-election, depending upon how you look at it. Five made it, five didn't. <clears throat> there are eight of us, including myself, who are uh, retiring from uh, political life, so you are going to see Big change, <clears throat> you know, 13 members of a 29 board uh, <clears throat> are going to be new. So <clears throat> hopefully <clears throat> you all will talk that over and determine who's the best fit for uh, um, the long run <clears throat> on SACOG. And then lastly, <clears throat> very similar in terms of the Sacramento Valley <clears throat> um, <clears throat> division for the League of California Cities. Several of the upcoming uh, board members um, did not win re-election, so um, you know, I'm coming off the board with my retirement, but there are, are plenty of openings, so I would put it out to the four of you, if any of you are interested in becoming more active in the League of California Cities, I would uh, greatly encourage you to do so. And if you need any, any more information, reach out to me, I'll give you who to contact, and what positions are open and uh, what I might uh, recommend for you. <clears throat> so uh, with that, uh, I had one more, but I can't remember what it was. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll close it out with that. <clears throat> Next item, Amy. Next item is public comment and members of the public may address the council on any item of interest to the public and within the council's purview or on any agenda item before or during the council's consideration of the item. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each, and if you wish to address the council during Zoom, please use the raise hand function um, or star nine from a telephone, and uh, when your name is called, I will um, unmute you so you can speak. And I do not have any written public comment tonight, um, and I don't see any hand raised uh, from the members of the public. Okay, I don't see any hands raised either. <clears throat> so what's the pleasure of the council on the consent calendar in item four through nine? I move approval. Second. Bruins moves approval. Middleton is the second. Roll call vote to Amy. Councilmember Bruins? Aye. Councilmember Daniels? Aye. Councilmember Middleton? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. And Mayor Slowey? Aye. Motion carries, 5-0. All right, item 10 was pulled, so item 11, Amy. Item 11, the subject is citywide multi-use trail naming recommendation, and the recommendation is um, the council review the top three potential trail names selected by the naming committee for, from submissions received from the public and select one as the name of the future citywide trail, and then adopt a resolution uh, with the name for the three mile long trail. Good evening, council. I'm gonna share my screen really quick. This is Leslie Bloomquist with the General Services Department. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you very much. I'm here tonight with Nicole Baxter, communications officer to present a very fun and exciting item to you, the naming of the citywide multi-use trail that's currently under design. So just a brief overview on what we'll be talking about tonight. We'll give a quick overview refresher on the project, discuss the project funding and status, and then present information on the naming process and the top three names. The citywide multi-use trail will be 2.9 miles long, 10 feet wide, paved, and have two two foot wide decomposed granite shoulders. It will connect and travel through seven parks, both inside Citrus Heights and in unincorporated Orange Vale. And it will connect to key destinations such as the Sunrise Marketplace and Woodside K through eight school. This project is in partnership with Sunrise Recreation and Park District, Orange Vale Recreation and Park District, San Juan Unified School District, SMUD, and Sacramento County. This project has been in the making for quite some time. In 2014, it was identified in the city's Creek Corridor Trail Project as a priority one trail segment. 
In 2015, it was identified and included in the city's bikeway master plan and general plan bikeway map. In 2016, it was identified and included in the city's pedestrian master plan. The project is funded primarily with a $6.2 million active transportation program grant. This is a highly competitive grant source that can only be used on projects that increase biking, walking, and other forms of active transportation. As part of the grant funding requirements, the city is required to provide matching dollars with local funds. There's about $600,000 and other non-general funds allocated to this project in order to meet the requirement. The city put together a number of different sources, including a per capita grant, measure A funds, stormwater utility funds, and tree mitigation funds in order to meet the requirements and be eligible for the $6.2 million grant. Here's a quick slide on the project status and timeline. In July 2019, City Council approved the environmental document for the project and directed staff to proceed with the final design. Since then, we've been working with our partners to finalize design details such as the final trail alignment, lighting, and the crossings of the public roadways. We're nearing the end of the design and are currently on track to bid the project in late spring 2021. One of the final pieces of the design is the selection of the trail name, which will be used to develop site-specific signage, wayfinding signs, and more. Over the past few years, we've been referring to this as the Electric Greenway Trail Project. This name was selected by staff for the grant application. When the trail was selected to receive funding, this name carried over for the name of the project. However, a formal name was never selected for the trail itself. Once selected, the trail name will be used to develop wayfinding signs, gateway and trailhead signs, trail maps and other outreach material. Essentially, once the name's selected, it will be used for all trail identification moving forward. In order to name the trail, we turn to the public. And so I'll turn it over to Nicole now to discuss that process in more detail. Thanks, Leslie. Good evening, council members and Mayor Slowey. Um, so like Leslie said, this is a, an exciting project for us. So to kick off our process of naming our new citywide trail, city staff invited members and community partners to join our naming review committee. The purpose of this community was to help finalize the naming policy and submission forms, promote the call for community submissions, collaborate on ways to engage our community, review names to ensure they aligned with not only our city's mission, vision, and values, but our partners as well, and ultimately vote on top names um, that we're excited to present tonight. So here you see logos of a couple of the partners on our review committee, um, and we engaged even more organizations beyond just those involved in the committee. Um, so our review committee finalized the naming submission process and policies and we launched um, August 28th. We were live August through October 31st and we wanted this naming process to be an exciting project, um, you know, represent collaboration and creativity and ultimately engage community members and reach as many people as possible. So I'm excited to share that we reached nearly half a million impressions on this project through a series of social media posts, including a Facebook Live interview with Dave Mitchell of Sunrise Recreation and Parks District, a series of Twitter, Nextdoor, LinkedIn posts, um, definitely engaging our audience on our website, in our newsletters, and more. And so these outreach efforts, nearly half a million impressions, resulted in 29 trail name submissions, which was very exciting. Internally, we had a goal set for ourselves of hoping to um, get 20 community submissions. So we were excited as a committee to um, meet and exceed our goal. Um, and once the naming submission period closed, we reviewed all the names that were submitted, um, guided by our criteria that was laid out by our policy and naming forms, which were on our website. 
And I wanted to just take an opportunity to say thank you to everyone who submitted a name for this project. It's so exciting to have the citywide trail connecting to parks, schools, shopping opportunities. And there were so many great ideas. We really had our work cut out for us as a review committee to try to whittle our way down to our top three submissions. Um, so after our review, the community members voted and we will show you the top three names. Um, so here are our top three names as voted on by our committee, our review committee. So again, we had 29 community members voted and um, our top three are Solid Roots Trail, Arcade Cripple Creek Trail, and the Electric Greenway Trail. Um, so I was going to show you um, a little behind the scenes on some of the submissions and the reasoning behind them. So for the Solid Roots Trail, Marcus and Cynthia submitted the following reasoning. My wife and I love living in Citrus Heights and to see that the city cares about the community by giving the community a new trail and regional park to enjoy is wonderful. Also, we thought using part of the city's motto was a great idea. And as the city's communications officer, I have to agree that using <laughs> the motto was a great idea. So I was glad to see our committee agreed. Um, the second um, top voted name was Arcade Cripple Creek Trail, and this was submitted by Bessie, who says she selected the name because she was well aware of the Arcade Creek and loves its green spaces. She says, I am less aware of Cripple Creek and feel both waterways are important to our region. The names I selected give both waterways credit and bring their existence and regional importance out to visibility to the public. And our third top name, um, which will sound familiar, <laughs> is the Electric Greenway Trail. And this was the project's name, as Leslie mentioned, for the grant pro process. So this name does already have a little bit of community recognition. And the name gives a nod to the SMUD electric transmission corridor that a large part of the trail follows. And then it also in includes the term Greenway because the trail travels through several parks and undeveloped land. And we did want to mention that our SMUD representatives on our review committee expressed a few concerns around the term electric. Um, they thought it could possibly be tied to a relationship with electric vehicles or electric bikes. Um, but ultimately they said that if council feels strongly and prefers this name, they are okay with it. So we wanted to give you, um, Council and Mayor Slowey, a sneak peek at the signage. Here um, are preliminary sign mock-ups of the top three names, which are, again, Solid Roots Trail, Electric Greenway Trail, and Arcade Cripple Creek Trail. So these are by no means final, but we did want to show examples. So kudos go out to Leslie and her team for mocking these up quickly. Um, so with that recap of the trail project overview and the process that we went through to um, receive community submissions, um, we're excited to present these top three trail names um, to our council members to ultimately decide on. So I will pass the presentation back to Leslie for council action. Thanks, Nicole. So the recommended action for council tonight is to review the top three potential names selected by the naming committee from submissions received by the public and to select one as the name of the future citywide trail and then to adopt a resolution naming the approximately three long three mile long trail to be constructed in citrus heights as that name and nicole and i are here to answer any questions should you have any regarding this item so i i have a comment first of all I'm glad to see of the top three, if you will, none of them are recommended names of an individual. When I read the naming uh, criteria, um, I'm not a big fan of ever uh, doing that personally. I mean, <clears throat> there's just lots of implications there. You know, it becomes a popularity contest. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't know of the 29 names we got, if any of them were actually uh, recommended, you know, individual names, but I'm glad we didn't go there. And personally, I, I don't, I've never liked that criteria. So, you know, I know we have like Van Maren Park and Mitchell Farms, but you know, that was, that was land that those folks own. To me, that's a completely separate issue. <clears throat> um, so kudos to coming up with these three instead of having the, you know, Steve Miller trail or the Jeannie Bruins trail or whatever, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just, 
I don't, you, you see things across the country right now where, where they're renaming schools, they're tearing down statues, you know, all because of names and things. I, I just think it's best if the city never goes there. So I'm glad that we have uh, non-individual names here. So I don't know. Question. Go ahead. Thanks, Jeff. Um, we couldn't name it the Sparky Greenway no, Trail? No, 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 no. That would be what about if I just want to go on record? My favorite was the Seven Park Trail. That just seemed to hit it. But uh, if we've got to pick from these three, uh, yep. so be it. Yep. Well, we don't have to. We don't have to. That's true. You want to put another one up there. Mm -hmm. I just really like the Seven Park Trail. It has a nice ring to it. And it's true. I really like the Arcade Cripple Creek Trail. And the reason I like that is because you know, solid roots means something to us, but it doesn't mean something to the rest of the community, you know, the county part of the trail. And bear in mind, most of, well, most of it's in Citrus Heights, but it isn't all in Citrus Heights. And, and um, I like the natural element to Arcade Cripple Creek Trail. I like to, not for the same reasons as SMUD, but I'd like to kind of shy away from the using the word electric. It does. It doesn't. In my mind, it doesn't coexist well with with nature. So, it's it's a natural trail, and yes, it does go under the power lines much of the way, but not all the way. And so, if if we were to choose from those three, I would choose number two. I think it's sustainable. Got it, Portia. One, two, or three. I like number two. All right. Brett? Yeah, I think RK Cripple Creek sounds like a trail, so I think that's good. And uh, I would actually make the motion that we choose that one. I would second it. Got a motion and a second to accept Arcade Cripple Creek Trail, Nick Solid Roots, and Electric Greenway. Amy, can you read the roll, please? Councilmember Bruins? Aye. Councilmember Daniels? Yes. Councilmember Middleton? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Okay, yes. <laughs> and Mayor Slowey? Yes. And you know, thanks, Leslie, for mocking up little uh, pictures. I think we need a, just a little more detail in the Arcade Cripple Creek Trail. You know, I can't tell if that's a road, <laughs> if that's a creek. But again, good job. So we don't want to make it too busy, but just a little busier would be better. All right, we'll start working on that now. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Nice job. So those were the items on that one, right? Yes. So the next item is department reports, and there are none. Next item is city manager items. Uh, yes. Just <clears throat> good evening, council. Briefly, um, I, I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, we have decided to postpone uh, next week's um, a strategic planning session that was scheduled for November 19th. We are looking for alternative dates uh, to push back. So, um, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. And the next item is items requested by council members or future agenda items. Nothing for me. Anybody else hearing nothing? I can go with a 23 minute long meeting. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the November 12th council meeting. Uh, we do not have a second meeting this month because it would fall on the Thanksgiving Day holiday. So the next time we will be meeting as a group <coughs> will be December 10th and we will be swearing in uh, new council members at that time. So look forward to Seeing you all for about five minutes on December 10th, and we'll turn it over to uh, the new people. So thank you all, and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Nicely done, your last meeting.